All right. My story is titled Willie Hayes, God of Destruction. At a point in time when televisions were still relevant, our ever-vigilant protagonist, Raymond, was sitting at home in his underwear, allowing his television set to stimulate his mind to such a degree that it became numbing and eventually boring. At around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, his boredom was so great that he decided to try out the advanced features of the new satellite package that came with his new satellite dish, which needed replaced a few days ago after his old one was curiously ripped off of his roof and lit on fire. How convenient that the mysterious old one... How convenient that the mysterious salesman with the non-existent address happened to be right there to help him in his time of need. Even with the stench of gasoline on his unseasonably covering clothes and rope burns on his four-digited hands, presumably scarred from a hard life of building and installing satellite dishes, the upstanding and honest man prioritized quality and prompt customer service above all else and handily earned that four-star review. Raymond pressed several of the buttons on his unusually heavy remote control to seemingly no effect, until he pressed a button labeled EXTN, at which point he was inflicted with a brief but splitting headache and pressure upon his eardrums. After a moment, the discomfort subsided, and the television showed a man in an impeccably clean blue-colored shirt and an array of quality products. The man proclaimed, Hi, Willie Hayes here for the Omni family of products, and I've got some real handy gadgets to show you today. Raymond was immediately intrigued. He grabbed an orange and went to peel it as the man displayed his merchandise, but found it difficult as he had just trimmed his nails the day before, and fumbled with it briefly before dropping it on the thankfully clean floor. First up, we've got an incredibly handy gadget called the Omni Peeler. Mr. Hayes held up a device that resembled a plastic handgun with a bowl on the end. Tell me, has this ever happened to you? The television showed a video of Raymond fumbling with the orange, with a gray filter and a large transparent red X appearing over the video after he dropped it. Raymond replied, yeah, matter of fact, that happened just now. The ethereal Mr. Hayes replied, Well, not anymore, because this device can peel anything, and I mean absolutely anything. The camera panned towards a countertop with an array of various fruits. Just place the bowl on the end of... Fine. Just place the bowl on the end around whatever you want to peel, pull the trigger, and it's done. Just like that. He used the device on an orange, an apple, a banana, a pomegranate, and a watermelon, and every single one had its outer layers pulled away in two clean halves in an instant. Like nothing. It's so easy, even your kids can do it. Mr. Hayes continued to espouse the virtues of this product, complete with various factoids and illustrative computer graphics, before finally concluding, and it can be yours right now for just four easy payments of $11.99 plus shipping and handling. And as a phone number appeared on screen, Raymond went to reach for the phone and order one, but was interrupted by Mr. Hayes saying, But wait, there's more. If you call within the next five minutes, we'll throw in a second on the peeler absolutely free. Just pay additional shipping and handling. Raynan would delay no longer and dialed the phone number on screen, and after the phone rang for just a split second, an ear-piercing noise played for a moment before a very professional voice answered, I'm the company, how can I help you? Raymond placed his order for the product and within moments heard a knock at his door. He opened it and found a package at his feet, but no delivery person in sight. What an efficient delivery service. He opened the package and found the two sets of his requested product and opened them immediately. He took the orange that had denied him the unrivaled citrus sensation and used the device as demonstrated by Willie Hayes, who was now curiously motionless on the TV set, presumably resting between demonstrations and mistakenly still shown by the camera, which his eyes laid upon with anticipation and intent. Raymond disregarded this and used the device and it worked as advertised, sending the halves of the peel flying away from each other and impacting the walls of the room with some speed. He set the device down on his table, which presumably must have been poorly constructed, as the minuscule weight of the device split it in half. He would have to call the manufacturer later. For now, Raynan enjoyed his orange, before realizing that he had no real use for two of the devices and tossed the second one out the window, whereupon it struck the ground and spontaneously activated. Willie Hayes laughed with maniacal glee before there was a great rumbling and the television cut out entirely. The sun's position in the sky started shifting dramatically, and soon it was night. The stars streaming across the sky with such speed as Raymond had never witnessed before, and many cycles of day and night passed in minutes. The half of the Earth's crust in which Raymond lived, the half of Earth's crust which Raymond lived upon, would drift through the void of space for some hours before its atmosphere was shed completely and everyone on it died of suffocation. The other half was sent hurtling towards the sun and obliterated in minutes. Willie Hayes, God of Destruction, claims another world. Something. Oh wait. Worst Timeline Something as unfathomable and vast as infinity is not something that is most easily understand. But we shall attempt to, regardless. Today we will zoom in on an infinity, 
far enough to find one peculiarly in the multiverse. Try one simple concept to wrap your head around. With infinite universes, whether you could possibly think of, as happened in at least one of them. A universe where everyone can eat for free. One where humans lived in magma. Anything. Infinite joy and infinite suffering. Infinite love and hate. Infinite fortune and our story today, infinite disaster. Think of the odds as a coin flip. Easy, right? A one and two, just about. Half of the universe land heads and half land tails, with a select few somewhere in between. We will look at a time when all the coins landed tails without fit. Earth, 2024. Virginia. An innocent man, Stephen Lynch? <laughs> was out of the range testing out a new rifle he had purchased. Just as he would in the majority of universes. He aims down the sight, exhales, and pulls the trigger to a thunderous boom heard from hundreds of yards around. The bullet travels through the air, landing in dead center of a target. Bullseye. A wonderful shot, really. After taking a moment to confirm his accuracy and have a private moment of celebration, he loads another round and shoulders the rifle, readying it for another shot. And his finger starts to pull against the trigger. Everything around this reality starts to collapse. You see, when you press your hand against a surface, the odds of your molecules of your hand in the surface perfectly aligning the pass through each other is low enough to be negligible, all about most keen of universe observers. Roughly in one in 4.74 to the power of 43. An interesting fact, to to be sure, but it pales in comparison to how incredibly unlucky Stefan was in this universe. Quantum tunneling, a concept still shrouded in mystery to the humans at this time, decided for the first time to rear its ugly head and performed an act so un incredibly unlikely and so precisely that the odds of such an event taking place again would likely be indescribable. Let's see how far this bad luck will take us. In the blink of an eye, Stefan found himself not at the shooting range, but at the presidential debates taking some hundred miles away. Before he realized what just happened, it was too late. The trigger had been pulled, sending a bullet straight into the presidential de candidate before anyone could notice. Bullseye. His apprehension was swift, as the news was pouring from the media, describing a Russian who materialized in the crowd and immediately killed a candidate. Indeed, Stefan was a Russian immigrant, a terrible fact to consider following the already stained, strained relations between the two largest superpowers in the world. With no way to prove his innocence, he was imprisoned with a life sentence without parole. Stefan's story continuously had come to an end. A shame for an innocent man to lose his life. But the grand story is only just the beginning. With rumors of a Russian agent being sent to the United States with secret teleportation technology swarming the media, the world stage eventually was forced to pick sides. Many would side with the United States, and fewer would side with Russia. Tensions would be the highest they've had in decades. The world has recovered from such things, though, and it should again, right? If only. Our terrible friend, Quantum Tunneling, once again show its might, and through a series of events comparable in probability to the initial murder, detonate a stoned nuclear warhead in California. It is at this point that the Earth and the universe crosses the point of no return, and mutually assured destruction is all but guaranteed. The United States believing that this was another covert operation by their enemies, would instantly retaliate, unleashing the full force of their nuclear arsenal against China, Russia, and all the other countries allied with them. The instant the U.S. missiles are detected, the other countries respond swiftly, sending their payloads to all corners of the Earth. Mere hours later, tens of millions were dead from the blasts and aftershocks. After a week, a billion. Billions more die, in the following weeks and months, leaving none except those at sea or those far away from populated areas. The resources dwindling and radiation spreading throughout the atmosphere through the winds, exorably driving all life to a slow, painful end. 
It is regrettable that a, that a species with so much potential could be wiped out by something so cosmically unlucky. None of the few survivors would ever know who really threw the first punch. All that mattered was figuring out how to put food on the plate for the night. It is so sad, but oh well. If you win some, you lose some. It's just a coin flip after all. POG Survey Corps Post Obliteration Government Service Long 7 2130. I've only been observing this universe for just three days. Within that time, they've gone from a prosperous society to ruin faster than any other civilization I've been assigned to, outside of those destroyed through outside influence. That means a lot, too. I've seen a civilization invent warp drives only to accidentally open a portal that can't close in the planet's atmosphere, draining it into space. In one, the queen of a pantheon got mad over her husband for making demigods with half the mortal population, resulting in an early end times. Then in another universe, they pulled asteroids towards their planet to mine without a plant to stop them from glassing the entire place on impact. I was even in orbit when that guy opened every gate of hell in the whole multiverse. Granted, that would still take the cake if it weren't disqualified for outside influence. This though, this surpasses all but the last one. It started when one of the people of the universe, fairly advanced and having colonized most of their star, came up with a terrible idea with the intent to break a record. You see, the residents of this realm were a rather unique species practically immune to high temperatures and even capable of getting close to their star should the equipment to keep their oxygen up and the body pressured be good enough. It was an absurd trend, one which had already resulted in multiple deaths, but nonetheless their younger generation had taken up the hobby of sun surfing that is exactly as dangerous as it sounds. This wasn't just dangerous however, it was highly illegal due to the known threat opposed to their civilization's energy distribution. Sun surfing would involve riding the panels orbiting their star as part of the Dyson Sphere and holding on as long as you can. It was very difficult to get close enough to grasp them, especially dodging security that had been recently heightened. But unfortunately for them, this one got through. The name of this perpetrator, uh, and that's a hard word, isn't known, nor whether or not he broke the record for longest sun surfing. But what is known is that a panel with a person-sized object clinging to it struck the focus beam, directing the energy to a battery array in orbit around their homeworld. I feel somewhat saddened, and maybe I could have stopped that, but I was in orbit around said planet at the time, far from this as it happened. You get used to it after 200 years on the job though, I suppose. In any case, the beam was knocked off its mark, which resulted in cutting across the landscape. Unfortunately. This species had not been unified, which perhaps may have not been a huge problem if not for the fact that upon the neutral homeworld, a being between representatives of all the planets was underway at that very moment, and directly within the path of the beam. Even more unfortunately for the people of the universe, the ambassador of the planet closest to the sun, which had been primarily maintaining the Dyson Swarm, was missing due to sickness, by pure coincidence at that moment. The Dyson Swarm would be readjusted. This resulted in it being recognized as a planned attack. System-wide war would soon break out, and peter out quickly, quite quickly as the civilization was in the most dangerous era many must get through, where destructive capabilities have reached planetary levels, but they had not yet achieved warp capabilities spread beyond their system. Once weapons were launched, it was only a matter of time for them to make contact. Countermeasures were ineffective and they could only wait for the end. A few of them made the realization of their mistakes when they saw XX Sunsurfer 69 xx post about their trip on social media, but by that point, it was already too late. <laughs>